thinking so. Next slide, please. People. So a little bit about myself. I am a fourth year at San Francisco State University. I am a double major in film and Asian American studies. So I will be graduating in 2022. So I have one more year left. So I'm very excited about this. I'm very excited about, about that. About that. Um, so I am aspired to, so I aspire to become a director and a producer within, um, within uh, Asian American studies department, studies community, and also to empower them and to let their voices be heard. Um, heard. Um, so for this, so for this webinar it is for those who wants to upgrade their techniques of modeling photography with any cameras and cameras that they have available, and also for those who are beginners who wishes to invent in a camera, a cameras or cameras and good quality of them uh, to learn and to achieve the best photos for modeling. modeling. By this, by this end of this webinar, our goal is to provide modeling tips and ideas. The, and the basic information that will that would help you all compose a good photos for any model, whether their experiences or not, or if you just or you just need to need photos to um, upgrade your Instagram photos, or even for LinkedIn LinkedIn photos as well, uh, as well. So if y'all have any question any any questions or questions during this webinar, um, y'all can feel free to put on it. It's upon a chat, um, and I will, and we will get to y'all, to y'all's questions, uh, and questions, and, and questions, and of course there will be a Q and A at the the A at this end of webinar too, so y'all can go ahead and put questions on the chat or the one button that says Q and A, and and, and, a. and I would like, to, and I am honored to introduce to two, two guest speakers, uh, Tuesday and Anle. Hello, my name is Tuesday King, go by Ruby Tuesday King. Um, I am an actress, model, dancer, singer. I've been going to SJCC for a little bit of uh, college education, doing projects there involving theater and film and getting to network through other student filmmakers and you know learn about the industry a little bit through that. Um, for my goals in terms of education and whatnot and schooling, I do wanna go with, forward with a degree in cybersecurity with a minor in film and anything involving the performative arts aspect, whether that's performing or teaching or, you know, being sort of the directing operator in that sort of mindset in that realm. So for me, that would be my rundown of who I am. Hello, everyone. My name is An Lei. I hope you all have been doing well. I'm a film student from San Jose State University, and my goal in filmmaking is to tell stories that heal the wounds of society. In today's webinar, while my pursuit is in film, I would like to share you some photography tips, tricks, and also pose ideas that you can utilize for not just for social media, but also for professional purposes. I understand that it can be quite daunting to take photos at this time, and therefore, if you have your own camera or your own phone, you can take a professional photo. It doesn't matter whether you have a fancy camera or even the camera back in the 1950s. These tips have been used from probably hundreds of years now until now, and we hope to share them with you today. So that way you can learn about these tips. Not only can you use it on yourself, but also you can share it to your other friends, family members, if you want to take that nice picture perfect photo. So with that in mind, I'm going to be heading off to finding your style. So what is modeling photography? In modeling photography, you might have seen it highly used in the fashion industry. The model or the client, whoever it may be, they would pay for the price in order to have the pictures of their head or their body taken for a professional portfolio. You might have seen these photos used on LinkedIn and even on social media, so that way people can look picture perfect and also professional when they apply to a job opportunity. At the same time, people have used small photography in order to advertise their products. It could be maybe a bracelet line, um, clothing line, or even shoes and boots. These are, there are different angles that are utilized in the advertising products that we can use today in order to 
take that nice photo that you can have just within five, five feet of your home. You don't need to have an expensive location or anything because if you know how to use the right angles and the right poses to take that beautiful photo, you can take a good photo anywhere you are. I'll be moving on to what camera I have used. Um, with the following photos that I'll be sharing, the camera that I have used is called the Sunny Alpha 7 Mark III. And the zoom lenses that I've used is a Sunny FE zoom, 24 to 70 millimeter F2.8 um, GM. So GM means the gold master or the grandmaster. And that, that indicates a line of lens that are popular, popularized and also high quality, high end that you can use with the Sony Alpha 7 Mark III. Another lens that I've used is a Canon EF 50 millimeter um, f-stop, lowest um, is 1.4 USM. And with this kind of lens, you're able to take brocade photos if you want that highly blurred effect in the background. And I've also utilized this, this um, a lot for the close-up shots. However, it's important to note that if you ever do use this kind of camera, that you have the Sigma mount converter MC11 because the Canon lens has a different mount. So if you put them together, the lens and the sunny camera, it's not going to fit together. Therefore, you would need the Sigma mount converter in order to convert your Canon lens to fit with the sunny body. But of course, the most important thing is that, you know, today's webinar, we are not focusing on the technical side of photography. We're going to focus on the more creative and artistic processes when you work with your models for different pose ideas and also how to direct them along the way. These are just suggestions on what camera you can use for if you want to invest in a high-end camera, but using an iPhone, or any other products that have a camera will suffice. Rule of thirds is a well-known guideline for photographic composition. So the rule of thirds, as you can see in this image example here, is where the image is split in one third, one third, one third on each portion from horizontal and ver vertical. In this guideline, you can see where I put the check marks here. Supposedly, when you take a photo, these are the best areas where you can put the subject in the photo. Of course, you can also break the rule of thirds, but based on the way that we have receptance towards photography, we have a preference to put our objects on these certain four, four um, perpendicular spots because that's where our eyes draw our attention to. We can also see the importance of the rule of thirds when we use on this type of photography. Now, as you can see over here, this kind of photography, you can also break the rule of thirds. The subject of the person in this photo is placed in the middle, but because there is the balance of both sides, there seems to be no issue in regards to breaking the rule of thirds. But as you first start into the photography process, it's important that you practice putting your subject in the rule of thirds and testing out these different angles. So that way you can make sure that you know how to compose your photo. And once you get used to utilizing the rule of thirds in your own photography, you have the opportunity to break these rules if need be to create a certain effect for your audience and for yourself. In regards to the composition of the photo, the composition focuses on how you arrange the image, whether it can be framing your image for, for maybe a certain photo shoot. Let's say for this here, we have a landscape photo. If I were to lower my camera down all the way to the angle of the trees, I would no longer see the mountains. But if I put my camera at a higher angle, I would be able to see, to see the depth of the mountains and also the shadows that we place in here. 
The visual effects in the composition of photography is highly important in this because not only do we see the depths of the shadows of the different layers that we see in the scenery, but it's also because of the lines that we use with the mountains. So if I were to direct you here, the mountains are pointing diagonally downwards. And as you look into the eye um, of this, they're diagonally downwards of the mountain, your eyes are directed to a certain place where you focus your audience towards to. So as you look upon this photo, notice how where your eyes land when you first hit the photo. Does your eyes first hit on the trees? Does it hit on the clouds? Does it hit on the mountains? If your eyes hit in a particular direction, think about why, why that is. In regards to modeling photography, you're also going to deal with the same cues over here because when you work with different models and things like that, maybe they're pointing their hand at a certain direction. Maybe they, their legs are pointed in a certain way where your focus is on the chest. Even with the small hand movements, it's going to prove very significant to where your audience focuses. And with the more dynamics that you implement into your models, the more depth that you can have when you conduct modeling photography, not just for a professional model, but also for those who have completely no experience. All of this in order to perfect the modeling photography, there are no limits to the way you look, the way your size or how tall you are. It's once again, it's all about how you compose your photo and how you rearrange the different shots here. So as mentioned before, leading lines are significant in modeling photography because they convey a certain sense of direction where your audience eyes should focus on. You can also see leading lines with the, the lines itself, walls, patterns, and the hand movements that you have in modeling photography. If you were able to see my screen, as you can see, I have, I have the divider screen over here and you also have leading lines that are going upwards and also horizontally. But because I place, as you can see over here, I place my divider and your horizontal lines are being focused over here. That means your eyes would convey to focus on me more. In regards of this particular model, as you can see over here, we have a leading line from the, her right elbow, and we also have a leading line from her left elbow. Simple things like this can also convey a certain emotion. She seems to be opening up because if you put your, your actor or your model with their arms crossed, they're closing themselves off to the world. Whereas for this one, we have a more innocent, more reminiscent feeling. And with her head tilted to the right, we also create this unique dynamic where it's not completely still and you bring some more life to it. Our eyes are used to being adapted to having this still evenness. And when we see a horizontal line being balanced and everything, not just horizontal, but also with the vertical lines, we see that there's a balance in everything. But the second that the line changes, especially when you see this girl's head tilted towards the side, not only do you create a certain tension with your, with your model or your actress, but at the same time, you also create a certain depth and also that story that will intrigue the audience to take a look at this photo and think about it more. Now, when it comes to shapes, we have certain shapes that we work with such as squares and triangles, circles, and so forth. We also have um, parallel lines that you can utilize in photography. But in this case, as you see in this example of a photo, you see a girl with two triangles that you can create. Triangles are highly receptive and known to have brought dimension into the storytelling of photography. 
because it deals with many diagonal lines. And it's also historically known as one of those uneasy symbols that we see in society. Of course, those times have changed, but we can still utilize and integrate those triangles into the photography that we have today in order to create dynamic for your poses and also direct your audience to look a certain way of your model. The important thing that we have here in modeling photography is how do you want your audience to feel about your photography? When they look at a picture, do you want them to feel enlightened? Do you want them to feel nervous? There are many different ways that you can utilize this with leading lines and curves. And therefore, I'll be moving on to a couple examples of my own photography that I've conducted and we'll be analyzing a couple of these poses that you can utilize for your own modeling photography. All right, so we have two different pose ideas and they're taken in two different locations. As we direct our photo on the left, we see a girl who's posing for um, for a line of African clothing. This is from the Ripples Foundation that I had taken for this nonprofit organization. So with this photo, we have her line to the one third on the right. She is following the rule of thirds when it comes to modeling photography. And we also deal with different shapes as we have her model in this photo. I had her directed into the distance. So when you work with models, it's important that you give them a sense of direction and also ease them in into the modeling photography. I would say it is very simple to tell a model to pose like this or like this, but you're going to create a stiff effect because your model is forced to copy what you're doing. But with a little bit of flexibility and also creativity to integrate with your model, you can create an image similar to this. With this image, I have also created some dynamics. Notice how her leg is positioned. Her, her left leg is faced much more forward than her right leg. And you can also see that comment in modeling photography too. So that way the legs of your models, your actress or your subject is not is not flat. We also see the use of triangles over here, as we see with her arms. There's a dynamic that you can use in your own photography. Now, as we move on to the second photo, we see this young man who is utilizing a prop, which is the bench. This is a picture that I had taken from a university and like I said, you don't need a lot of expensive things in order to take a good photo. This is a simple bench that is in the quad of my, of my um, community college. And from here, we have a dynamic of this particular actor who's looking towards his left side. And we have this zigzag, zigzag like dimension of your pose where his eyes are pointed towards the right. But his hands and his body movement, as you can see, we have a leading line here with the diagonal of his shirt. We can see the diagonal and especially the way his hand is positioned pointing towards the right. With this kind of pose idea, you can use props, whatever that's available to your area. You can use a simple chair, a sofa, anything that you have. And with the twists and turns of the bodies, you can achieve this kind of photo and it creates a certain tension to it because you have lines that are facing in opposite directions. Once again, this model is being shown with the rule of thirds and this indicates in this case too. Here we have another example taken for a nonprofit organization to promote a clothing line over here. So with this kind of photo, we also have two sets of directions that are implemented towards the model. 
So with this image, we see the model, her eyes are facing towards her left. For us, it's our right. But her, her legs and her arms are facing lines or the sense of direction are placed in opposite directions. We also use another prop over here, which is a bench that we found outside. And what's important to create the dimension is having the leg of your model or your subject rise one before the other. Because if you put the legs flat and as simple as it is, you're going to create a flat substance that will lack interaction between your audience and for your model as well. But for this case, if you're able to indicate the leg of your, of your model to go forward on one another, you're able to create the dimension of, of um, this kind of photo. Right, we will be moving on to another pose idea for your photography being towards our right, which would be his left. So he is looking straight forward and you can have the dynamic of having his legs closer to the camera and having his body further away. In this particular dynamic compared to the other one, we see death because we have faced the angle of the camera towards the feet rather than his body or flat, flat on the surface of his body. So therefore we can see his legs seem more elongated and stretched out in this particular photo. Once again, we are dealing with this particular shape. We have the triangle shape so that way we can create depth and so your photo doesn't look like he has one leg. <laughs> We also deal with shapes over here and also within the distance. Although we're not working on most of the technical terms of this photography, it is important that when you do take a photo that you take it during the time of maybe sunset, sunrise, or most likely when the light is much more fitting to you. So that way you do not have to deal with harsh background that will lack your focus on your model. As you notice in these other photos I have taken, please take notice of the f-stop, the exposure time, ISO speed, and focal length. This is the setup that I had for each photo, so that way you can utilize for your own photography or make different choices from what I have made. All right, we will be heading on to our next photo over here. So the prop that I utilized for this particular photo is a window. Because the window is so clean, you can actually make a mirrored image of this particular actor or model without having to use Photoshop or anything like that. So in this particular photo, not only have we followed the rule of thirds, but I had given a particular action for the subject to use for his photo. I, I had told him like, okay, I want you to lean on this window and I want you to unbutton and button while I take this photo. So when you take these kind of photo shoots, you want to take multiple photos because he's indicating a certain action and can change within an instant. I would say the best photos that I had taken for modeling photography is when there's an action indicated because it's more natural, it's more lively compared to if you were to speak to your model and say, I would like to have the pose look like this. If you only have your model pose in a certain way, they're going to be completely still and it will make your photo a bit a bit more fragmented and out of life. But if you were to provide an action for your model to utilize in their own modeling photography, then you can create substance images that bring certain parts of life, such as in this photo when he's unbuttoning the, the collar of his sleeve. Once again, we are dealing with the triangle that's on his left arm that creates a certain type of dynamic towards this image. I would say um, this is 
one of my model's favorite photos when I had taken the photo of him. With these certain type of settings, you can also take black and white photos if your camera permits it. And if not, there are also editing tools that can provide that effect. This was taken in an indoor location and just alone with his facial expression, you can see how it drives a particular emotion towards the audience. We don't know whether he is feeling sad, lonely, or depressed or anything, or maybe he's just feeling content, depending on how, the, how each audience feels. We're dealing with the shapes of triangles and also the circles and the roundedness of this photo. But also we're indicating once again, the rule of thirds in order to compose this particular image. And we have a certain sense of direction with the leading lines, not just from his arms, but also a direction from his eyes. As he is looking down, we're also inclined to look down along with, with um, the model of this photo. So where your model looks at the camera, whether they look at the camera or they look away from the camera, pay attention to their eye movements because that alone will highly dictate where people will look in the photo as well. It's not just that your arms and your legs are posing for the picture, but it's also where your head faces and where your eye goes as well. His head, as you can see, is um, slightly tilted to the right and down. In a modeling photography, you want to create a dynamic with both of the body and also your head movement. So let's say, for example, if your head were to tilt towards the left, if you, if you were to see my face, and that means you can tilt your body towards the right just a bit, to create a tension of dynamic between two parts of the body. And if you can have the eye facing forward, you can also have another posing idea for your photography as well. And lastly, I'm going to wrap up with the pose ideas before we go to directing with modeling photography. In this particular pose idea, we have two dynamics that we are utilizing for this particular model. So with this model, we had directed him to look straight towards the camera. And this is what he claims to be the James Bond movement. I provided him a certain action in this photo, which is tightening and untightening his tie. So he was playing with his tie while I was taking this photo and his head was tilted slightly towards the left but his body, while we can see it kind of looks straight at the camera, but it's also tilted slightly towards the right. So that way you could provide two sense of directions. One is that his head is going to our right and his body is going to a different direction that creates this tension and this dynamic and depth for this photo. We also see what the way he utilizes his hands is with his right hand, he's pointing in the diagonal towards the left. And we also see his left hand towards the diagonal right. There are different dimensions that we can use here for modeling photography. And who knows, maybe your next model can be the James Bond of today, just like this fellow over here. So when you're working with your model, before I work with any model, I always try to learn what kind of music my model likes. More likely, you want to set your model in a relaxed environment so that way their posing abilities can be much more flexible when you work with them. You can prepare a certain amount of poses, but the best poses that I have seen so far is actually done with improvisation. If you were to provide music and maybe you can allow your model to do some warm-ups when they pose, you can tell them, hey, I would like to take a picture of you, but you know, make something up. You can do something silly, maybe wave your arms, play all apart, and you can take photos while they're doing those actions. And when you create this kind of establishment with your model, it was going to relax them and it also brings them around different kind of photography aspects before you head into the serious part in directing a certain pose for your model. 
by doing that way, not only are you creating that bond with them, but you're also calming them down before the photo shoot. So that way they can prepare and be flexible with what kind of modeling that you have in mind. It's important that you also start a conversation with them, such as when I start walking to a particular location, I would ask them, hey, you know, how was your day? What did you eat today? And some of them, they, you know, they would answer and we would talk about their lives. And that just opens your model further to working with you better because you don't want to have a stiff environment where you don't have this connection with your model. They're not going to be able to work with you or understand you well when you're working with your own professional or photography hobby. The goals of these kind of tactics I'm sharing you right now is getting your model to open up to you, not just from the heart, but also um, understanding what you need in the way you direct your models and creating a relaxed environment. From here, I'm going to move on to Tuesday, who will be sharing about her experiences as an actress in directing the model and the things that have worked and haven't worked with her that you should keep in mind for modeling photography. Thank you, An. I think you touched very perfectly about the importance of the composition of the shot and how it creates a sort of natural feel, which is what we're gonna go into. Um, I think one of the fundamental aspects of being able to create a good space for the model and to create as much of a natural process as possible is making sure that you set a scene for the model to sort of like embody. So it's important to remember that not everybody can see the vision that you have in your head. So when you're able to create that visual and that tone for the model to embody, it makes it so much of an easier process rather than having to think on the spot and you know improvise when they're kind of already in that uncomfortable nervous state. Um, some of the examples I gave in terms of tone and visuals could be like being a very flirtatious vibe, flirtatious vibe, sorry, or very more serious and maybe professional. If they're doing an in-character shoot, or maybe it's going to be candid, so it's going to be caught off guard, or maybe there's going to be some intentional posing, right? Um, some of the other poses or some of the other tones that you can have, excuse me, would be a masculine versus a feminine tone. And being able to really articulate that and communicate that to the model not only really helps to create a strong presence for that, for, for that camera and for that shoot, but also it's gonna help with that model sort of discovering for themselves what they think the masculine like look would look like or how a feminine pose would look like or how they would do a flirtatious versus serious, right? So in order to actually be able to set the scene for the model, it's really important to take that first step, which is to understand and know the occasion that the photo shoot is gonna be taking place for. So that way you can tailor your direction to the actual needs of the project. So some of the examples I gave here are headshots versus let's say apparel modeling like on suggested in the first couple slides. Um, obviously for a headshot, you're gonna want something that's a little bit more professional. So you're gonna go for more of a serious tone, right? It's gonna be more intentionally posed versus an apparel modeling. Some examples I gave were like cosplaying or brand deals. I think for cosplaying, obviously you're gonna have a lot more character driven tone. It's gonna be a lot more personality in that versus like a brand deal, which might also have the intentional posing, but there's gonna be a little bit more of a feature of the masculinity and femininity aspect to those actual poses. Um, some more examples of maybe personal sh photo shoots that uh, directors might be or photographers might be doing is weddings and engagements and company photos and content promos, you know, engaging from or extending from maybe they need a photo shoot for a profile picture for their Twitch account, or maybe they need a YouTube banner, or maybe they're going to be doing a photo shoot for an actual music video, you know, so they're all going to have their own tailored responses to how you direct the actual model. Um, obviously, you wouldn't suggest the same poses for somebody who's doing a cosplay to the same people to someone who's doing maybe a com professional um, photo shoot, right, like a company photo shoot. Um, I think one of the most important things for me that was very beneficial to creating like a very comfortable environment um, was when I knew that the photographer understood what I was feeling, right? So they, the, those feelings were usually feelings of nerves, a little bit of self-consciousness, and which obviously resulted in kind of a stiffness and then a lack of exploration with my body. And when they were able to realize that and recognize that, they were able to combat those feelings with encouragement, giving little tips. So they're able to see me from the model's perspective. 
Um, I think one of the things I liked was, like I wrote down here in the fifth bullet point was give tips for quick adjustments like the intensity. So intensity could be involving your facial expression or the actual emotion that you're portraying and you're exuding, right? Or the body part, body part placement really to really um, is important in terms of how you're standing, where your hands are gonna be, you know, giving suggestions like maybe spin around and give me a hair flip or, you know, put your hand under your chin or maybe run your hands through your hair. Like Anne was mentioning before, it creates a little bit more of a natural flow that I think is really important to actually being comfortable. Um, and not only does it do that, it really generates a lot of intention for the model to be exuding and to be taking charge of, right? I know <laughs> some of the other suggestions that I really liked and that I would give if I was ever on the other side of the camera was I would say, maybe utilize your clothes as a prop. So take the jacket off and have it over your shoulder. Maybe have the shirt cinched up on the waist, more of like a, a fashionista sort of vibe in a picture. Or, you know, tying your shoelaces very dramatically to create like a fun characteristic that you can embody, right? Um, another thing that's really important that Ann also touched on was making sure that you're interacting with the space that you're in. So that means depending on the shoot and the set of the shoot, whether you're gonna be in a bedroom or are you gonna be in a makeshift office? Are you gonna be outside in a courtyard? Is there gonna be a fountain behind you? You know, and being able to really interact with those spaces, whether that's leaning against the wall and being kind of like a approachable, cool sort of characteristic versus maybe sitting in a chair with your feet propped up on a desk that creates kind of a power complex play between the model and the actual camera. Um, also having fun with shadows and reflections, like Ann mentioned, having a window that's very, very clean and creates a reflective surface. You can have fun playing with that and having like maybe shadows from tree leaves and pre tree branches to create more of a natural feel, I think really helps with the overall product of the modeling and the actual photos that come out. I know for me personally, one of the biggest sort of motivations and like the things that make me feel comfortable was when the director or the photographer would tell me, don't be afraid to go big. I, I oftentimes say when I'm working in the performance uh, performance art you know, industry, you hear this all the time from directors, is that they want you to be so big that they want you to tell, they tell you to bring it down a little bit because it's so much easier to sort of tweak those big reactions and those big emotions rather than trying to coax it out of people. You kind of get an easier time trying to handle those shyness and you know, a little bit of reserved feelings. So being told like, oh, take what you just did and do a little bit bigger. It kind of is reassuring to me every single time I hear it that I'm not being over dramatic. I'm not, you know, taking it over the top. I'm not looking ridiculous. I think even in small instances, like when we're taking photos for Instagram, like on mentioned, where, or something just for um, maybe Facebook, whatever it might be, we're posing, we feel kind of a little bit uncomfortable. Like we feel like we're, am I, am I being too serious? Am I being a little bit too maybe ridiculous? But when you're told, oh, don't be afraid, do that again, do that even more. That's amazing, you know. I think that adds a lot of more a comfortability for the actual model to be able to be comfortable on set. Um, I think another thing, one of the last things I wrote down here was suggesting large personas and egos for the actual mod model to embody. And what that looks like to me in my head is kind of like the stereotypical maybe fashion photographer where they're yelling at you things that they want to see, where they're saying, oh, give me Vogue, give me, give me Paris Fashion Week, give me runway, you know, so that's automatically going <laughs> to elicit a sort of tone from the model that might be a little bit more serious and composed and professional versus if they were to say, oh, give me skater girl, I want to see grunge, I want to see Lars in charge, I want to see rebel, you know, that might be, like I said, the chair, sitting in the chair with the feet kicked up on the table. It creates sort of like a, a rebellious aspect, a sort of power play in that. And I think being able to communicate with your model and like on said, really setting the scene and getting that comfortable level, not only is it gonna help them explore the space and the tone so that they feel confident being able to actually deliver, but also make sure that you're resulting in the best possible results for the actual shoot. Uh, thank you, thank you to Tuesday and on for giving us like an insight, that's like insights about insights about the about modeling photography, uh, especially for those who are super, or who are super new to the or new to this, uh, to this, or even new to this, or want to you know advance their skill, advance advance their skills and their techniques for needs for their portfolio possibility. Uh, please. I just want to give y'all a tip. It's not too late to start like, to learn now, uh, to learn. You can maybe learn today. Um, 
you don't have to have like a fancy cam have like a fancy cam fancy sorry fancy cameras for it uh it, you can use your you can use your iphone to practice and to practice and to practice uh just uh do a little techniques and stuff even if you're just like asking your friends or your family members it doesn't have to be experienced model necessarily you can ask like people you you're people who can trust um like i said whether it be like a family or friends um to you know be their be that your model be your, your model too so i think that will doesn't want to so that can also definitely work for sure so like i said uh if y'all have any questions any questions for that um, for them whether it be on the chat or q a um will nay or you can say it directly to uh, to us verbally and we'll really and we'll be glad and we'll be glad to answer your question 